Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which I use uh, extensively in my practice in the family uh, courts. Uh, this is Hirschman and McFarlane on uh, children, the Children Act Handbook 2022 to 2023. It's now annually published. Uh, David Hirschman and uh, Andrew McFarlane have uh, produce this in conjunction with the online service that is available and it comes from Bloomsbury Professional Family Law. It's an important book for anybody involved in children matters as I am and I've given it a title Elizabeth and I discussed the book but I wrote this review. Um, it's a fundamental purchase for those involved in all aspects of modern children law. I've not said child I've said children law because I think it's I think it's quite important to remember to talk about children and individual people um, I do quite a lot of child arrangement orders and as other aspects of, of those proceedings and I think this, this particular book is very helpful. Let's have a look at it first of all. It's a heavy book, nearly a thousand pages, there we go. The front, then the spine, and then the back. And there's a quote from me on the back as well, which they've kind of included, which I'm not... Modesty means that I'm not, I'm mentioning it, but I'm not going to say what it actually is. There, there you go, there's a, it's a paperback. You've got some shaded areas there, which identify the main parts of the book. The back of the book, there's no, um, there's no index. The miscellaneous section is calendars. Then you've got the other sections, uh, which I'll mention again. Presence guidance, um, the FPR, family procedure rules, and you've got statutory instruments and... Um, statutes there at the front and right at the front of the book you've got the front page there say Bloomsbury Professional substantial company details there about the uh, company itself it's available as a PDF as well as an e-publication and there's a preface to the first edition from uh, Hirschman and McFarlane then you go straight into the content section itself and of course, the thing that's most important for us are the notes. We'll go with it. Let me just show you the notes, just to give you an idea. There we go, some notes there. You can see the word notes. And then, in this case, again, it's a definition. Sometimes it's an amendment. Depends on really what it, what it is. So what I've got there, there's the book. So what do I say about this book, apart from the fact that it's extremely useful? Obviously, it goes with the red book as well, which you may be able to just see behind you. But again... Carrying both this book and the red book is actually quite, can be quite useful because it's as up to date as it will be. Obviously there's an online service as well, more about that in a moment. Um, it's an excellent book I think on the Children Act and it remains invaluable in my view to all child law practitioners, judges and social workers. When it first appeared in the 1990s as Children Law and Practice effectively, as part of the service they have. The drawback was the layout of the text which required both the commentary and the statutory material to be taken to court. You sort of loaded up with quite a lot of stuff. So David Hirschman and Andrew McFarlane, now the president of the family division, decided in 2001 to create this modestly sized handbook in order to ease the physical burden on users by providing core statutory material in a portable supplement and that's what you've got so you've got the red book and then you've got that as well depends very much on what happens with the case of course i mean quite often i'll take these books to court and i won't actually really refer to them much because of actually dealing with people and the individual problems of the case the editors and the uh, publishers bloomsbury professional in my view have done just what the two editors uh, sought to um, achieve which was to ease the physical burden and of course the handbook is a useful addition to your family law library in any event um, we found that the editors have made a useful selection of uh, resources which are both sufficient to meet the needs of uh, portability with the provision of essential core material as a yearly update and that's the purpose um, frankly if it's going to be very very detailed again I'm sure the judge and the the court itself and your opponent will be on the same page as it were about where you're going with a case but again this is to try and uh, ease the burden a bit. Um, the notes section which I've indicated in the book 
are highly relevant, I think, for us, both in court and in conference, because they keep us as up to date as possible with the changing nature of the jurisdiction. That, of course, includes the basic primary law, the secondary law, and the um, any practice guidance and uh, other things, processes that come into it. Uh, indeed, the publishers, which are Bloomsbury um, Professional Family Law, make our lives much easier with these titles because of the law and the, the processes continue to become more detailed and complex, growing all the time. I mean, you just have to look at the family court practice. I haven't got the white book here, it's, it's over there. Uh, but it's the same thing, it's just building up all the time as more and more things happen. The work is updated and issued in this edition as part of a subscription package uh, to all Bloomsbury Children Law and Practice uh, subscribers. And it's available online to the subscribers and it's sold separately, this book, to non-subscribers, which is why I'm reviewing it. Because, again, uh, money comes into this. This is relatively cheap compared with the subscription. And, as, as I'm sure many people in practice know, it starts costing quite a lot of money quite quickly if you subscribe to a lot of things. But what we've got here is the containing consolidated and fully amended texts of the Children Act 1989 and relevant provisions of the Family Procedure Rules 2010 and supplementary practice directions, amongst other things. And for practitioners, the handbook meets the need for a reliable, up-to-date, portable source of key children proceedings uh, legislation and related guidance. I'll come on to that in a minute. In fact, just what you will need, in my view, for your practice concerning children matters. Now, the handbook is separated into four parts, effectively. Statute, statutory instruments, practice guidance, and then finally a short bit on uh, what's called the miscellaneous section, which is the calendars. And there's a shaded part, which I showed you, opposite the spine side of the book to make it easy to find the parts. It runs to just under a thousand pages as a paperback and fortunately the paper is of a durable uh, quality like the book itself so the paper is not too thin. And relief upon relief there are no cases <laughs> which makes life simpler probably and allows us to concentrate on the notes and amendments to the legislation and guidance. I have to say that I'm not a great one for cases in this particular area of law. Not a great one for a lot of cases because I think every individual decision has to be looked at in its own way. But of course there are persuasive and binding precedents we have to follow. Let me conclude by saying this. We particularly like the inclusion of the President's guidance. And that's the one of the 5th of May 2022 covering fact-finding and domestic abuse in private law children proceedings. It came from Sir Andrew McFarlane as president of the family division and I think it's required reading before the fact find begins in order to ensure that it is to see whether the fact find is really necessary to be held because much time and anguish can be avoided in some situations if you can decide what it is you're actually going to do. I've got a number of cases at the moment which are exactly in that position where I try to warn the parties of what will happen to see if we can try to limit the problems because at the end of the day the people, we're used to it as counsel uh, and, and other people in court, we're used to what happens but quite often for the parties they're not and they really don't understand sometimes uh, quite how awful it can be until they get into court and then the reality hits. However, let's hope that we can get some sense in some cases. It doesn't happen every time. The date of publication of the book is um, 11th of April 2022. Here it is again. Okay, the spine and then the back. The little shaded bits I mentioned are there. And if you just go into there, that's the family uh, procedure rules right in the middle, FPR. Um, practice Direction 12B, in fact, um, that particular one at the middle of the book. And again, what I will show you is the thing I referred to earlier on, and that is the practice guidance, because that particular guidance is very helpful for this edition. Um, 
it really sets out some general points and then it talks about the fedder and is the fact find necessary and so on. And I do urge you to look at that depending on what's happening with your specific case. A big thank you to both um, Hirschman and McFarlane for this excellent work. You make our lives easier. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.